the stationary points on a curve are where the gradient momentarily becomes zero. So here it's um, it's positive and then it becomes negative. It's zero here and similarly here. And that means that the gradient function is equal to zero here. So we need to differentiate. Find out dy by dx. And we can do that using our rule of powers. The 27 is going to disappear. The 9x becomes 9. Here we bring the 2 down, we're going to get 6x. Here I bring the 3 down, I'm going to get 3x squared. And then I'm going to say equals 0 for stationary points. All right, I think I now we need to solve this. Um, so I think the good shout is to basically uh, swap it all over to the other side and write it as 3x squared plus 6x minus 9 equals 0. I've essentially changed all the signs around just to get rid of that negative in front of it. Now I'm going to divide through by 3. Could have done this all in one go, to be fair. Okay, and that is a much nicer quadratic to factorize, which I'm going to have a go at. So I need two numbers that multiply to give minus three. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, therefore. So add to give two, that's going to give me plus three and minus one. Therefore, x1 is equal to minus three when I make this bracket zero. x2 is going to equal one. And now I need to substitute back in to my um, original function to get the value of y. Oh, it's a bit, a bit of effort, but let's do it. It's going to be twenty-seven. Right, I'm going to do. I'm just going to do like a little bit of working over here. Actually, to be fair, I probably should show what I'm doing. When x equals minus three. y is going to equal 27 and then 9 times minus 3 is minus 27 so those are going to cancel and it's going to become minus 3 times 9 because minus 3 squared is 9 and then i'm going to minus uh minus 27. okay these cancel uh i've got minus 27 here i've got plus 27 actually i'm going to get zero so when x 1 is minus 3, y, 1 is 0. We've actually found a root of the uh, of the cubic. When x2 is 1, okay, this will be a slightly nicer. We'll get 27 plus 9 minus 3 minus 1. Um, so it's going to become 36 minus 4, it's going to be 32. And I found the coordinates. I could write them directly as, you know, in terms of the normal coordinate form, but these, this is fine as well. We're now asked to show whether uh, the, each, each station point is a maximum or a minimum. So the go-to is to find the second derivative. There are two methods. This one tends to be a little bit quicker if it, if it works out. I'm not going to talk about the second method if, unless, unless I need it. Okay, second derivative. Now the 9 disappears. I'm going to get minus 6 minus 6x. So when x equals minus 3, so now I substitute this into the second derivative and I look at whether it's positive or negative. I'm going to get minus 6 plus 18. Well, it's going to be greater than 0. And that means minus 3, 0 is a uh, minimum. So if it's greater than 0, it's a minimum. If it's less than 0, it's a maximum. A little bit on that. Why is that? It's because what's happening to the gradient at the minimum 
the gradient is actually, well here it's negative, then it becomes zero, then it becomes positive. It's actually increasing. That's kind of one explanation for why this works. Um, so essentially you need to remember it, but that's that's why it works. And then when x equals one, d2y by dx squared is gonna be minus six, minus six. That's definitely gonna be less than zero. So one, 32 in maximum. And that is enough explanation of what's going on. Hence state the set of values of x, which this thing here is an increasing function. Um, well, we've got, we've basically got all the information we need. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a little sketch. I always think it's a good idea to do a sketch just to, you, you know, you can probably just go by the maximum and the minimum actually, but I think it's good. It's a negative cubic. So I'm gonna draw a negative cubic in there with two stationary points. Positive cubics looks like this and negative cubics the other way around. So a little bit like that. And actually it is enough because you must, for a negative cubic, you must get your minimum first and then your maximum, which is exactly what we got here. Minus three, zero is here. And then one, 32 is here. So where is this an increasing function? It's where the gradient is positive. And if we travel along the curve, well here it's negative, it's negative, here it's zero, here it's positive, then it becomes zero, then it becomes negative. So it's this region, and I can simply write down that it's a minus three, less than x, less than one. That's gonna be my region. It doesn't include it because it's, uh, it's technically not increasing or decreasing at the stationary point, it's temporarily zero. That's our answer.